In this video, I'm going to go over two different ways of moving a rigid body after collision with a character controller. I'll also go over a common problem when using this technique, and I'll uh, try to solve it the best I can. So the first way of doing it is to apply a velocity or a speed into the direction that the character controller was heading. This is great if you want to have the control over the speed right after impact, but it, it doesn't really work well if you want to rotate the objects around their own axes. And the second way uses the collision point between the two objects and it applies a force instead in the same direction that the character controller was setting. So that allows for some rotations and stuff. So this script should go on to your uh, character controller game object. And yeah, I just now realized that this line of code is just useless. I don't know why I wrote that, but yeah, just skip that. So let's save our uh, push power or push force float here. I'll set that equal to four. And you can obviously play around with it, uh, make it public and just test what's best, what's best for you. And this function on controller collider hit is basically a uh, uh, on collision enter for um, character controllers. And yeah, let's let's save the rigid body of the object that we just uh, hit with hit dot collider dot attach rigid body. And we actually we we also have to check if the body is equal to null. So if the object uh, did not have a rigid body at all, or if the body is kinematic, we want to return out of the function and just skip this whole process of trying to apply a force. And this this line of code is also completely like you don't need that. It's um, I found it working well, but you don't need that if you don't want to. So. It basically checks if the character controller is moving at a very steep angle. Uh, it just skips the process again. So let's save our push direction uh, vector. And that should be equal to hit dot move direction dot x. And I'm skipping the zero here at y. If you want to give it a force upwards or a velocity upwards, if you're jumping, that's you can just write that in there. So hit dot move direction dot y instead of the zero. So body dot velocity is equal to push direction times push power. So this is the first example that I showed you. Um, yeah, I'll comment that out and let's go on with the next one. So it just uses two more lines of code. So that's a, a line of code where you save the position of the collision points. So that should be equal to hit dot point. It's just as simple as that. And then we want to apply a force onto that point, as I said. So body dot add force at position. I have actually never used this before, so I just learned something new. So push direction times push power and then we have to put a comma there and collision points and another comma and force mode dot impulse so we don't want to apply the force over time oh and by the way um looking at statistics is kind of what makes this really fun so so i'd really find it interesting to see what would happen if i asked you to leave a like on this video but enough of that let's keep going so the problem I mentioned earlier has to do with the character controller just walking over certain smaller objects. And I solved this by creating a child to the character and uh, giving it a trigger collider so that it can detect rigid bodies nearby. And I'll come to that later, but let's create a cylinder. Let's rename it to check for objects or something. Let's rescale it to 1.4, 1.4 and... 0 0.4 on the Y and let's drag it down as well a little bit more maybe yeah so let's also disable the mesh render because we don't want to see the like see the cylinder and let's remove the capsule collider and create a mesh collider instead and be sure to check convex and this trigger so let's now create a new script. Let's call it check for objects. 
and let's create the script. So the reason why this problem exists is that character controllers use something called a step offset that you use when you walk on stairs so it snaps onto the next step. And that's a problem here because we don't want that to happen when we are close to the other objects. So let's write private float step offset and we don't have to assign anything here. And let's also save our, um, our character controller. So basically whenever the another object comes into contact with this uh, trigger, it'll just set the step offset to zero and whenever it exits, it's gonna uh, set the character, uh, character controller, sorry, uh, step offset back to what it was before. So yeah, let's assign the uh, step offset in the start function and let's write our on trigger stay function here. So let's now check if the object that it's come to contact with has a rigid body. So if other .get component .rigid body is not equal to null. And then we want to set this uh, character controller dot step offset to be equal to zero. Let's also copy this and paste it and change the function name to exit instead and just simply change the zero to step offset. 